Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about EC135 tail rotor replacement. There's an inspection, depending on what your setup is. If you look at the MSM, if you have the fixed Torlon rings, it'll be a different time. You'll, you'll get to extend the time. There's a service bulletin that came out. So the tail rotor inspection is 2,000 flight hours or four years if you have complied with this SB. So if you're coming up on this tail rotor inspection and the company sends you a tail rotor assembly, and you just slap it on, um, you might run into some problems. Mainly, there's a handful of items that are supposed to be inspected and signed off on this 2,000 hour, four year inspection that are not part of essentially the tail rotor that they send you. And we're gonna go over that today real quick. So if you get a new tail rotor and slap it on, you're gonna need to take a look at the thrust nut, the locking washer, the thrust screws, the center flange, and of course the tail rotor fairing, that's all part of the tail rotor assembly. And when they just send you a tail rotor, they don't send you those. Uh, we used to get them with all these things. R recently, that's not the case. So to prevent you from getting hosed, just make sure that you sign off the inspection on these other items, these other five items that don't come with a inspected tail rotor, all right? We're just gonna go through this real quick. So if you look at the MSM for supplemental inspections and you scroll all the way down to tail rotor, there's, it wants you to inspect, it's 22 things. There's 22 chapters in the AMM that they want you to look at. The following 17 items are already completed if you received an inspected tail rotor assembly. Radial play check, tail rotor inspection, tail rotor blades, ball joint, hub body, outer bearing ring, inner bearing ring, spline flange, laminated torsion bars, outer torsion bar screws, inner torsion bar screws, lighting ring, lower bushing uh, with Chinese weight, upper bushing with Chinese weight, attachment ring, pitch change spider, anti-buckling segment. The main thing is that these five items right here, you need to complete the inspection on and sign it off in the logbook because they're not included when you receive an inspected tail rotor. All right, thrust nut, locking washer, thrust screw, center flange, tail rotor fairing. We already talked about that, but we're just gonna go over the whole process real quick. That's the whole point of this video. So we're just gonna go over a quick removing of the tail rotor and installing the new tail rotor and all, and uh, some things that you might get jammed up on. Not a big deal, but the main thing is when you do a tail rotor assembly replacement, you also need to sign off these other items that weren't replaced um, that you complied with the 2000 hour four year inspection if you don't you're going to get jammed up so here's a picture of the torlon rings and the service bulletin has them fixed with something i'm not sure what they fix them with a couple notes on changing the tail rotor look when you take off this fairing you don't need to unscrew those screws all the way you don't need to take them out okay you need to unscrew them like 10 turns or 10 flats or whatever it is so that they're almost out but leave them in uh, the maintenance manual says take them out but if you leave them in it's easier to take this um, flange off you could tap the uh, you could get like a rubber mallet and tap tap the screws that are sticking out and it pops it'll help pop the whole flange out because those don't go through um, those screws just cinch down this tightening piece. They just hold on the retaining spring, and when you tighten it down, it pulls the retaining spring out to hold it inside of the um, the hub body. If you take that out, then there's nothing really holding that spring in except a rivet. The retaining spring can get twisted, and then it's really hard to put it back in the whole f um, fairing to put it back on. So keep that screw in. Just loosen it up a lot. All right, there's that. All right, so when you go take the tail rotor off, one thing you're going to want to keep note of, and if you read the maintenance manual, it tells you this. Look at the shim washer stack up. Measure it, see how thick it is, and write it down. If you lose that, you could, you're could you going to have to call records, and you're going to have to get the hard card for the tail rotor. If you just got a overhauled or inspected tail rotor and it has the hard card with it, then the shim stack up is written onto the hard card of the tail rotor. And it says that in the maintenance manual. Okay, if you're just taking a tail rotor off and putting a tail rotor back, the same tail rotor back on, no worries. Just don't forget the dang shim. Um, you know, I've seen guys write the shim thickness on the outer flange just to, uh, I don't know, just because it just makes it easier. Because I've seen some helicopters that have zero shim. After it was rigged, it's rigged at zero shims. And uh, so if, if that's the case, I like to write on here, no shim. So people aren't like, oh no, it got installed incorrectly. 
So the shim goes underneath the flange and it goes between that flange and this fitting right here. It's the output control of the tail rotor control. And right there where the red mark is, is the fane surface between the shim and the tail rotor output control. Okay, taking it off is easy. Putting it on isn't really that difficult either. So we're just going to go over putting the tail rotor on real quick. Your tail rotor gearbox with nothing on it. Clean that, clean those splines up pretty good and take a quick look at it. All right, you slap the tail rotor on. There it is. It's on the output shaft. All of this is in the maintenance manual. You got to go to the manual. I'm not going to go through any torques or anything like that. Just a quick once over on how to, how to put a tail rotor assembly on. It's not difficult, but there's some things you're going to want to... There's some specific things you're going to need to read in the manual, okay, like the torques, how to torque this stuff down. But anyway, after you get the tail rotor on, you put on this thrust nut. You screw on this thrust nut by hand. If the locking washer doesn't line up with the thrust nut, because the locking washer has to line up with these tabs and the holes of the thrust nut, if it doesn't line up, you can unscrew the thrust nut just a little bit. That's what it says in the manual. After you put on the locking washer with the thrust screws, uh, and you torque all those the right way, and then you safety wire it, you're good to go. All right, then you bolt down the center flange with the shim. That nut right there, so the nut that holds on, that holds the center flange to the control rod, there's two different types of nuts in the maintenance manual, and it just gives you the part number. And in the IPC, it doesn't show you the difference of each part, so you don't know. The torques are totally different for this nut right here. So my friends at the hub in Lexington had this on their wall. I had to take a picture of it. Really appreciate that. But if you look at the IPC, the part number EN3434-100 is, is the all-metal lock nut. And on there, it, it says effectivity whatever. He says effectivity 1A, B, and C, or whatever it is. I'm not sure. But it's pretty much all the tail rotors. Don't quote me on that. Look at the IPC effectivity. But the EN3434 is the newer one. The ASN whatever is the nylon locking nut. And that's only effectivity like one whatever that means what you got to go look at one for tail rotor or whatever but that's i think it's the old ones but it shows right here it's all metal on the left and the other one is uh, on the right is the nylon so it's a cross section and a picture of it so whatever nut you have you know it's totally different torque like way different torques and if you didn't know what was what then it takes you a while to figure it out and it's very annoying so just a heads up just a tip for you guys. Honestly, tail rotor is not a big deal. Um, once you slap it on, then you're going to go go ahead and do a balance of it. But mainly the whole point of this video is to let you guys know that there's a disconnect. It used to not be this way, but it is now. And it came to my attention uh, recently when I was doing this job. The tail rotor inspection is 2,000 hours and four years, depending on what tail rotor you have. But they only send you the tail rotor assembly. They don't send you these other parts, okay? They don't send you the thrust nut. They don't send you the center flange. They don't send you the locking washer. And they don't send you the thrust screws. And they don't send you a new fairing. They used to send you some of those parts. Look, you can go ahead and order these thrust screws. No worries. But, I mean, these other parts you're not going to order. They're crazy expensive. They used to send them to you as a kit. All of it. And it was signed off in an inspection, completely inspected as an assembly. But now it just comes in assembly without these parts. So the whole point of this video is to let you guys know that so you don't get jammed up. If you put a tail rotor on that was inspected, but you don't inspect these parts, you're screwed. Okay? Not, not today. Not tomorrow. But down the road when somebody reads this stuff and they realize, oh man, that part's been on there for 10,000 hours. And no one really inspected it. So, because we don't sign off the inspection. We just sign off... When the inspections do, we just sign off the replacement of the tail rotor assembly. So I just want to make sure you guys are aware of that. Don't get jammed up. I appreciate you guys watching the video, and I hope you found some value in it. And I'll see you guys next time.